Okay, we're looking at Ramage CD Designer. Uh, this is a program for creating label files for use on the Ramage Producer Suite. Um, you can create labels within this program, text, logos, small graphics, line art, or you can just import a finished label that you've created in a graphics program like Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, it, pretty much anything that can output to a TIFF or JPEG file. Uh, first thing you want to do, open Ramage CD Designer, click on New, File, New. So the new document wizard comes up. She's a blank template. Uh, I'm using the Ramage Ever 600. Let's choose the appropriate printer. Next. And now I just choose if you want a full or if you have the standard CD with the larger hole. Most of the disks for the Everest printer are going to be full face. And then I just click finish. So this gives us the blank CD donut here. So the tools that we have for creating a label um, right here in CD Designer, we have text, uh, lines, shapes, and pictures. We also have barcodes if you want to add a barcode. It's actually kind of nice. It has the different um, types of codes you can use and uh, you can do a human readable, not human readable, but it's nice to be able to just quickly add barcodes that can be scanned and give you a little bit more professional look and functionality if you need it. We'll start with the text. Let's go on the text and uh, gives you single line if you're just doing one line, multi line if you want more of a paragraph type. Um, arc is also nice if you want something to go along the edges, the top or bottom. Double click on the text. And uh, in the embedded data, under data source, you can change, you can type out what you want here. So we're going to call this test disk artwork for Ramage. Just give you an idea. So that wraps around the top, does that automatically. Pretty nice. Um, we do another line. This will just be kind of our title. See. Click once to place it and then double click. And I'll call this uh, Ramage Test. And you can come up here and you know italicize, bold, make it larger. You can change the font if you'd like. On the right side here, there is a horizontal and vertical align comes in really handy just being able to get everything centered just right. I'll do another line of text. This one I'm just going to do small. I'll just put it on the side here. Oops. Call this version 1.0. So you can see there's a, there's a, a good amount of options. Again, I'll use the auto center uh, vertical and that just centers it for you. There's a good amount of options there. Uh, if you want to import a graphic, you click on the picture here. And so you get a few options. Embedded picture is the way I recommend doing it most of the time. What that does is it saves the artwork file that you're choosing as part of this label. So the label size is going to be larger once it's all said and done and, and saved. But you only have one label to, to move around and keep. Um, if you choose, say, an external picture file, that gives you that links the picture to this label. But if that picture disappears from where it originally was or changes, it's going to change on this label or disappear from the label. And I've had a number of customers where they use the linked files and then they copy their CD designer files, move them to another system, and then wonder why all their logos and artwork is not there. And it's, it's basically you're setting yourself up for some big problems if you ever had to kind of rebuild, you know, where do all the files go, the file structure and all that, if, if you lose your system or if you try to copy them to another system. So embedding the picture uh, basically gives you a larger file, but everything is right there. If you've got that label, then it's always going to be ready to print. So that's what I recommend doing. Insert from file. 
And so now I've got a file I just put on my desktop here. Just to give you an idea, I've got the DVD logo. So you just place it. You can actually uh, adjust the size of these as well. If you double click on it under size, you see this one it has shrunk it down. It's a large logo. It shrunk it down automatically to 14%. So let's make it 25%. Um, and then I'll center it here. So that just gives you an idea. Oops. That just gives you an idea of how you would set up a label in the Ramage, completely in this Ramage seated designer. Now, if you already have a label that you saved, say you, you created it in Photoshop, or you know what you're doing as far as making labels. You can just import the artwork. Now you actually can be, there's a good number of files, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, those are, those are the, the popular ones. You can actually use um, a Photoshop. I've got a, I've got a Photoshop file here. So even just native Photoshop files can be imported. Can't use PDF or EPS or Illustrator files, um, but Photoshop works just fine and uh, let's make this original size and just horizontal easiest way to do this is to create your artwork as a 120 millimeter square in Photoshop or wherever you're doing it and then I usually output as a high resolution JPEG or you can output as a TIFF JPEG just seems to give you the most bang for your buck as far as being it's not a huge file size but the quality is, is still there I mean I could take a high res JPEG versus a TIFF that's you know ten times the size and once it's printed you can hardly see any difference so the JPEG is is my personal preference uh, but if you have 120 millimeter square you import it and really all you have to do is hit these two horizontal vertical alignments and you're done and so this is ready to print right here you can see uh, the Everest printer is automatically going to clip out wherever you tell it to on the edges inner and outer edges so that's the artwork right there. Um, pretty easy if you have it pre-laid out. Uh, if you're doing this work for customers, specify that. Tell them you want 120 millimeter by 120 millimeter square, uh, 300 DPI with no clipping, no registration marks or anything like that. Just make the square, you pop it in, and it's good to go. Now, print settings. Click on File, and then Print. So the system is actually, this software is actually going to save these print settings per each individual label. So you can set these up as default in your print driver, uh, but if you have one label that has different requirements from another, you're able to save it for each individual label. So here you want to click on pro document properties. So and the obvious stuff here, uh, the installed ribbon. So the ribbon type, there's two types of ribbons, there's CMY and there's black, which they call monochrome. So you want to make sure if this is a color, you have it set to CMY. If it's a black only label, you can set it to monochrome here. Under advanced. So this is where um, most of the standard stuff, quality is photo, color matching set to CMYK. That's for the most people, they're going to be happy with just that. Uh, the printable area is one thing that will change depending on the media that you're using. So by default, it is 118 millimeters on the outside. 24 millimeters on the inside and this is generally about the size of the white donut that's put on to most discs so if you have a little bit of white edge on the inner or outer edges that just means you need to extend that out a little bit the way you do that is click modify and now you can bring the outer diameter out as far as 120 if you want I usually wouldn't go much more than 119 and basically what's happening here is it's going to attempt to print on the outer edge of the disc and sometimes that's just clear plastic so it may adhere it may not adhere to that clear plastic but if you go too far out you get kind of a weird look where it's some color sometimes there's not color on the clear it just doesn't look as professional uh, same on the inside 23 22 millimeters you're basically giving yourself like a bleed edge um, but the way the printer works is sometimes it will stick sometimes it won't to the to the clear plastic that you're bleeding over onto. Uh, what I found most ideal, we use uh, a lot of Spinex brand and uh, Tile Uden or JVC brand discs. And uh, you can do a more fine adjustment rather than going by millimeters, I go by fractions of a millimeter. 
I've found that 118.6, somewhere in that neighborhood, and then 22.6, 22.7. These numbers seem to cover very well uh, for both the JVC white and SpinX white discs, where you don't go, you don't have too much over over bleed edge, and uh, you don't have any white edges. Uh, basically, you want to play around with your media and get it just to where it covers the white edge, but doesn't give you too much extra printing on the on the clear ends um, on the inner and outer hub. Click OK there, so you can see 118.6 millimeters, 22.7 millimeters in the middle. That's it. Make sure you click close here. Don't click uh, cancel because you want it to save what you just did. So now you'll do save as, and uh, I'm just going to save this to my desktop just for testing. I'll call this test one. And that's it. So now I have this label saved and I'm ready to use it in any jobs. And uh, if you need to adjust the label, you just open it back up in CD Designer and then go back in the file print document properties and then you can adjust this printable area usually that's the only spot you'll need to do some tweaks once you know what these numbers are for the media that you're using um, then you're all set but uh, once you, as soon as you get that locked down it's very easy to create labels that's it with CD Designer